Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do it again and again and again each year. Yeah. Good to see you here. Yeah, and you have some wonderful things to show us and some new finds and new productions. And so let's get started. Should we start with this let's case here? That's fantastic. The grand out there. <laughs> you went right to it. Oh, yes. I yeah. uh, love that. This is from the same pocket as the Aztec Sun. Exactly, because it's a spray type, yeah. yeah it'll put it in it's light. beautiful. It's a little starburst. Yeah. So I assume that came out at that period inside right. of a collection. Yeah. Yeah, this one actually went to Europe and was in Europe oh, since... Okay. When, when was this? The early 80s? 1984? Yeah, something like that, yeah. yeah. So about 30 years. Yeah, at least, yeah. And there's beautiful little crystals of paratomite oh, there as yeah, well. Oh, yeah, very good. Okay. Zero in right in there. It's, it's a bonus to the Lagrandites when they have the paraatomite associated with the, the Lagrandite. And see, that's the paraatomite there. So I remember growing up as a kid, yeah. you know, owning a Lagrandite was a holy grail. Oh, Any yeah. Lagrandite, oh, yeah. little thumbnail. Yeah, exactly. Let me pull that out yeah. for you. Hell of a nice small cabinet specimen with huge, huge Galenus. See, this is the sitter, right? You can tell right away, you know, immediately it's that locality. Yeah, it's the classic. It. Yeah, it's classic, yeah. absolutely. I like this piece because not only is it complete all around, yeah. but you have the sphalerites, yeah, which exactly. you almost never see. Yeah. And so these were found in the 1800s. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. It's all complete, like you say. Mm -hmm. Sitterites are mostly in the back here. Yeah, that's wonderful. The thing is, we see them turn up here in the U.S., Mm -hmm. But usually they're just representative. Exactly. There's been very few major yeah. ones that have come yeah. up. No, that's a major cabinet specimen. I love these every time I see anything even near this. Yeah, look at this. It's all complete. It's, Double termination. Yeah. All of these are yeah. little oh, terminations. Yeah. Every, every one. You know, it's funny. So last year I told myself, I have too many darn aquas. I'm going to stop buying aquamarines. Yeah. Probably everyone has an aqua. I, oh, yeah. I saw this. Don't my ever heart let dropped. anything go. Yeah, my heart always dropped. Get, yeah. I, I just yeah. fell in love yeah. with you it. Got, you got to keep them because this is just this is so bizarre that these fabulous aquamarines have been coming out of the ground like that. And 50 years ago, forget it. You just hardly got any aquamarine with Matrix at all, let alone this from uh, Pakistan. You know the story about the Chinese in Pakistan, right? What? So two years ago, one of the main Pakistani mineral suppliers sold his share of the mining rights yeah. to the Chinese for a few million dollars cash oh, and ongoing purchases. They didn't follow through. Oh, so for a couple of years, a lot of things went over the mountains to China. Much easier wow, for them yeah. than came here. You see that? That deal fell through, apparently. Oh, so there's a lot more Pakistani material coming onto the market this year. Interesting. This was mined early last year. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. I see a beautiful ruby, and it kind of looks like Bur Burmese material. It does. Yeah. Well, it's it's classic. Oh yeah, absolutely. How long have you been yeah. dealing with Burmese rubies? Fifty years. Oh yeah, I've been with uh, the whole hobby of fine minerals sixty years now. So you recognized it immediately as Burma for yeah. the the waxy luster and the color, that's right? right? That's right. That's right. So. I saw this piece 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. It was labeled Burma, had a label, it was mm -hmm. sold to a collector. This, this illustrates the danger of losing labels. Yeah, so this piece right. turned up here at the show, actually, oh. last week. Oh. Uh, no label, assumed to be just Afghanistan oh. by someone who didn't recognize it. Yeah. I remembered the piece. Yeah. Okay, so these are, um, these are audulites that yeah. started coming out a few years ago from oh. Peru. Okay. The initial location yeah. was actually totally misguided. They, the people who sold them first to the market gave the wrong province oh, to hide okay. the fact they were stealing them from the rightful claim owner. Oh. So now the rightful claim owner has been digging them the last year and a half and selling them directly. Oh, okay. Hence the new location, which oh. disagrees with what was published a few oh, years ago. Okay, interesting. Green. Very Beautiful. Good. Rich apple green. I mean, who thought the Canadian material would be surpassed? Exactly. And oh, so this is, is actually something. the Hubnerite mine, the same mine we've known oh, for 30, 40 okay. years. Yeah, right. Right? With all they, those Hubnerites? Oh, wonderful. Same Hubnerites. mine. Same mine. All Did that you time. Believe that. There's nothing. Never seen anything right? like this. Yeah. This is one stringer vein. Oh. They're following it with hand tools. Okay. And, and it's, it's audulite with little tidbits of Hubnerite. But oh, almost none. okay. Like down in the crevice of microscopic. Yeah, little humorites. Okay. 
I bought yeah. these in China okay. at the Changsha Show in May oh, okay. as Chinese pyrites. Oh. So the truth turns out to be they're collected about 100 meters over the border into Burma, oh. and they just walk them back. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. The, the mine that's entrance beautiful. is on the Burmese side. Maybe yeah. the mine extends into, exactly. into Yunnan province. Oh, that's so funny. They're but beautiful. Politically, they're yeah. Burmese. So Dave, I want to say, you're too, too damn smart. <laughs> Most people look at these, and I can fool them and say, where do you think these are from? Yeah. And on an immediate glance, they'd say, Washington. <laughs> You're right, they're not. They're subtle differences. Mm -hmm. But most people look at them and, and just assume they're Washington. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So in the past, China's produced plumbo gumite like these. Okay. You know, very attractive. Yeah. Okay. Uh, druzy, sparkly coatings. Okay. And this is the same ore body. It's the other side of the ore body that produced all the green pyromorphites. Oh, wow. Okay. So what they did is they found another edge of it and they're working it. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is it's very highly oxidized and as, as they go down layers, it's changing dramatically every 10 or 15 wow. meters. So these came first. Okay, these little guys. After this. Yeah. And there's not much of a vertical difference in the mine into yeah. where they were found. Yeah. And they're of course being collected artisanally with hand tools. This they're is not an economic fun. mine. Yeah. And That's beautiful. The Chinese didn't know what to do with this. In fact, they didn't value it very highly initially. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because they didn't know the species. They were trained. We've all trained them over the last few years yeah, to get sure. pyromorphite. Right. So some of the first pieces were thrown away. Oh, they were digging to try and find more pyromorphite. You see that? Okay. And it, and it took a while. Because of that, they, it took a while to trickle out onto the market. Yeah. But the first ones appeared at the... Um, just before the Shanghai show in oh, November. Okay. Okay. So starting in October, I made two trips to China okay. to pursue this mine. Yeah. And this was then the next level down. Yes. All of a sudden, they went from this size yeah. crystal. Stepped right up. Look at this. To these monsters. Look at this fabulous big museum tent. Yeah. Look at that thing. It's easier yeah, to film just take out. Look at this. And that's pyromorphite, the green underneath yeah. there. How about that? Yeah. That is so interesting. One thing that's catching my eyes is pyrite on calcite yeah. for a common mineral, but with wonderful iridescence covering these uh, scalahedrons of calcite. Yeah. That's beautiful. So this is another find. It's been slowly trickling out, mm -hmm. and they just seem to hit the best ones I've oh, ever seen. beautiful. Uh, around August. Yeah, they almost look like somebody treated this and made it like this. It's just so different yeah. with this heavy iridescence. No, oh, that's wonderful. So the trick is that most of them are damaged. Yeah. So again, I, when I say there might be a few hundred good specimens, yeah. that's from seeing several thousand pieces that came out, but you most of them that. are worthless. You see that? Or they're banged up. Yeah. This is the other new find from China. Interesting, oddball blue fluorites with quartz. Oh, but it is unusual. They've got They're heavily tiny truncated fluorite. Modifications. Yeah, look at this. Now these were thousands of specimens. Probably three okay. or four thousand specimens wow. came out at once. Yeah. And then done. So how do you grade this compared to all what you've seen? Like a superb or... Because I haven't seen the ones with this uh, habit like yeah, this. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, the balance between the quartz and the fluoride That's is That's very essential. important. Oh, yes. Th this is, honestly, this would be on the, on the higher end of very the average. Good. Okay. But there are some better ones. There okay. are some like this. But it becomes a matter of personal aesthetics. Yes. Do they have too much blue coverage? Yes, that, that's true. And they're smaller. It some looks like all just more. individual. But, I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. Aesthetically, it's a gorgeous thing. So this fits the needs of some collectors, and the other ones would kind of lean more toward that. I yeah. like, honestly, this costs more money. Yeah. Because there's more fluoride. Yeah. I like the aesthetics of having the That's separation. Right. That's right. Personally. Yeah, exactly. Same here. But what's nice is that there's so many pieces that came out. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure they're around the show. There's lots and lots of them that are yeah. going to be very affordable yeah. for a lot of collectors. Yeah. But yeah. I'll tell you what, even in China, it's hard buying this stuff in China now. I you see go, that. You go there. And they all have laptops and cell phones. You see, they, and, yeah, they know the whole game. Yeah, yeah these exactly. things sell within forty-eight hours of coming oh, out of the mine. You see that? These are already on the resale market in Guilin you or Changsha. That? 
Wow. Right? Yeah. So if I'm not in China yeah. at, at that moment, the week they're found, I have to send my Chinese manager. You see that? Literally on a train or plane within 48 hours, or they disperse again. Exactly. It happens fast. Interesting, yeah. And, and the Chinese, the buyers in China, are now paying, especially for the larger pieces, they're paying enough money that a lot of Make them stay it in China now. Yeah. Uh, how many times are you going to China now? You're going there all the time, it sounds like. <laughs> you know, it helps to have an office there, and, yeah. and thank God a manager I trust. Yeah. Um, if he can't get on a train or plane immediately, or if I need to be there for a deal, I hop over. There. I spent eight weeks there two years ago, okay. five weeks a year ago. Wow. This year, hopefully three weeks, okay. four or five trips. Yeah. And I so might be there So they're kind of taking ca care of things there for you. I have though. a good team there. That's yeah. good. Very yeah. good. You I have some fine florists from the Ross Lilly collection. And that's all hers. This is unbelievable. I do have more here. Oh, my goodness. But I, but I want to correct something. You, you said it by accident. Yeah. You called it a florite collection. Yeah. Ross Lilly's collection is more than that. It's, it was originally of course, marketed for the expensive, beautiful okay. fluorites. Yeah. But it's, it's an important suite. It documents the locality and the history of Southern Illinois. Very much so. And so he had strontianites and benstonites and calcites. Yeah. Um, his goal was to have something of every style. That Very came good. Out. Okay. So, so, yeah, I'm presenting more of it yes. as we get it cleaned and processed. Exactly. Here's another hundred pieces. <sighs> Unbelievable. But but I Quite do a collection. Yeah, I just I just want to say, you know, to anyone who looks at it, it's this guy poured his heart and soul into this for Oh absolutely years. Thirty plus years. years. Yeah, exactly. But he never considered it a fluoride collection. It's an oh, Illinois collection. An Illinois collection. How interesting. Okay. And here's a few bathroom rocks. <laughs> We're gonna bring out and show in good lighting this time. This is, speaks for itself. This is a yeah. fabulous thing. My God, it's unbelievable. Heavy. Yeah. It'll How many ounces is it approximately? It does it have an ounce weight on it? It's about 15, 17 inches long. Look at this. This is wonderful. And it does have a little bit of hidden crystallization, still alluvial. It's fabulous. These golds coming out of Australia, yeah. just unbelievable. This is really totally unique because of the shape. Yeah. So yeah, this, this is, is really not the normal gold field. This That's is not right. Bendigo. This is oh. Western Australia. Yeah. And so there were two pieces that came out in this weird elongated shape. This oh, is the it's larger. fabulous. Absolutely yeah. fabulous. I mean, it's just dramatic. Oh. You never see anything like this. No. No, that, that's a real conversation piece. This is one of the now classic green garnets from Madagascar. This is beautiful. The crystals are so large. I've seen yes. the material, but much smaller crystals. That's a wonderful specimen. And these are pure green. Most of them have a little brown in them. That is correct. These are real, yeah. real intense green. And so you know these are collected several meters to 10 or 15 meters below the water level. Oh, it's a very difficult be? place. That is fantastic. So this is from a small pocket that was found early last year. There okay. were just a few pieces. Okay. The, the location has not been as productive as it was in the past. I see. But boy, the size of the crystals. Now, have you seen in the, the past crystals this big? The biggest one I, I, I've seen myself personally. Not that I've seen much. Yeah. I've seen only a few of this size. Yeah. But okay. the main thing about this is the richness and the color. Oh, absolutely. The color is totally. And it, it, like you say, the other ones have a little tint of brown in them, but right. they're green, but they have a little, just a little hint. This is real intense green. I mean, you have to respect them all. They're all incredible oh, for what they absolutely. are. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. But this one I thought was another level. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. What a pleasure. Oh, I pulled out another somewhat more esoteric gem crystal to show you. Oh, Benitoite. This no turned up. Something about Benitoites. Yep. Kind of reminds me of the one I donated to the L.A. County Museum a little bit. The one big crystal on the Matrix. Yep. If you ever get to L.A., it's on exhibit there with the seahorse. Uh, no, excuse me, not the seahorse. The golden bear uh, that's a famous nugget that yeah. came out of California. They're, they're sitting next to each other. Yeah. And at the time you donated it, you probably thought there'd be more Benito White coming down for decades. Um, no, not now it's it gone. was just uh, they, they wanted to buy it. Uh -huh. And they gave me a deposit on it of 900 and I handed it back. I said, no, I'm gifting this. Wow. Uh, yeah, I gave it. It's one, one of the nice gifts I, I gave, gave away. Yeah, it's wonderful.
And of course, this deposit is basically gone. Oh yeah, you don't you don't hear it. It's all pieces coming out of collection once in a while, right. but they're not producing this stuff. It's pretty much exhaust, as far as I know. That crystal is nearly four centimeters. Oh yeah, that's a big crystal. That's a little. That's bigger than the one I had in the matrix. I would say that's twenty five percent bigger. So I thought uh, I thought we'd end our room tour with something a little different. Okay. This turned up at the gem show. Okay, clinofumite, and here I thought it was some common type of thing just from a distance. Uh -huh. You can't tell what it, it is like from a distance. Yeah, like a garden. Specialty. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. So you have a cut stone, and I assume that's rough. Well, here's what happened. This yeah. turned up at the show okay. at one of the jewelry shows. Okay. They found one pocket. This is from Tajikistan. Okay. And they cut it all and save just one Ooh, nice crystal to go with it as an example. Wow. Dave, it's a tragedy. This yeah, is what happens, that's what happens around the world. That's right, 100% right. Boy, they look at it and say, oh yeah, we can get a nice stone. Yeah, cut that up immediately. It's quick money, right? Yeah, yeah. So right. this is what happens. We have to get the word out. We yeah, have to that's spread right. these videos. We have to spread news about crystals. For most people, it's, it's a much better economics to just cut the stuff. That's right. So that's the only oh, surviving crystal. That's fabulous. This is a fabulous set here you got. Yeah. Okay. That's all I got. Well, once again, you do it do it again each year. You always have wonderful surprises for us and <clears throat> very elated to come and interview you, Rob. Thanks, really Dave. appreciate it. It's Keep an up honor. the good work. I still remember you terrifying me when I first met you and was oh, yeah. intimidated. Yeah. <laughs> this guy comes in and criticizes my most expensive mineral in yeah. 1992. Yeah. It was a $700, $800 rock and I about yeah. broke into tears. Yeah. And, and do you know what it was? <laughs> that you were trying to sell me English Torbanites, which were very good. Uh -huh. Nothing wrong with them. They were a very fine specimen. But unfortunate, you were kind of thinking, boy, I've got the best one of these. You can probably get them nice. one. Oh, yeah, you really liked it. But to me, it was they're nice. They were very nice. Uh -huh. And that's it. And it was so, and I knew that poor guy, he doesn't realize, because I think you were under the impression that these things were a lot more. Uh, uh, unique, yes. and I, 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 I'm very straight. When I talk to anybody, I tell them what I really feel it is. I don't embellish or exaggerate or whatever. I tell you what I feel about a mineral. I'm not always right, but personally, anything I make a comment in a mineral, that's a personal thing with me. I got the uh, message. He also told me to start going to museums and looking around. Oh yeah, that's right. So I did. Yeah, good for you. We've come a long way. Thanks Thank so you. Much. Take care. Now.